Jonathan Quigel is the CEO of uh, Docomo Digital and, and, and he has been at Docomo for a large uh, period. He was, well, preferably for this uh, event. He was a chief transformation officer on the digital transformation event. We couldn't ask for a better speaker to start the day. Um, and we couldn't ask for better introductions in, on top of a large career at Docomo. Um, and Jonathan has also been the head of uh, Asia at Vodafone. And with him, I probably share a bit of uh, time in uh, Indonesia, where he's also working there. So uh, plenty of uh, perspective and different perspective. So here we go. Let me call Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Yaya. How are you today? Uh, it's great, and it's great to have you here. So, Jonathan, um, I don't, I probably steal too much of your time, so I should let you uh, start your presentation. And to everybody out there, I should say, uh, if you have questions for Jonathan, please add them, and I'll come back later, Jonathan, and I'll make sure that I distribute some of those questions. As well. Perfect. Thank you, Daria. Uh, greetings, everyone. Uh, as Dario has said, my name is Jonathan Kriegel, and I serve as the CEO of Docomo Digital. Really delighted to be with everyone today here at the 2021 edition of uh, MEF Connects. Uh, as Dario said, today I'd like to share with you some thoughts on direct carrier billing, uh, really about how the future of direct carrier billing fits within the broader market for payments. Like to also share some highlights uh, and best practices from the most progressive network operators um, out there and identify a few key challenges and opportunities uh, for future growth in the carrier billing space. So let's get started. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, as we all know, uh, network operators are facing uh, dual pressure. Uh, of revenue declines uh, in core connectivity services, uh, right, uh, including roaming. And at the same time, uh, they need to commit additional CapEx on 5G spectrum acquisitions and network rollout. So in this environment, uh, network operators are increasingly faced with a critical choice. Do they sit on the sidelines and really just play the smart pipe game, or do they choose to play a more active role in the increasingly digital lives of their customers. So those operators who are choosing the more proactive approach are driving what we consider a second wave of convergence in the telecoms industry beyond the shift to all IP networks. This sort of convergence 2.0, if you will, is taking place higher up in the services stack in categories as diverse as fixed mobile bundles. TV and content, automated home, smart mobility, health and wellness, and of course, uh, digital commerce. So the most progressive operators uh, leading the way in Convergence 2.0 are investing in the creation of uh, digital ecosystems. These ecosystems can include both uh, digital and physical goods, loyalty programs, uh, a wide range of payment options, and all of this presented to consumers through a compelling app or digital wallet. So we see that operators in South Korea and Japan have been front runners uh, in these new digital ecosystems. And certainly Docomo Digital shareholder, NTT Docomo, provide some important learnings and we'll take a closer look at those uh, later in the presentation. So here um, on, this, uh, on this graph, you can see that Telefonica is a leader. We work closely with them in many markets, and they are particularly proactive in seeking out new merchant partnerships. Another good example here is Turkcell, who carved out Paycell, their payment subsidiary, as a way to address the regulatory environment in their market. Paycell is creating an ecosystem of payment partnerships with carrier billing uh, at its core. In Latin America, we work with America Mobile, and they are driving this approach to growth in, in the non-core connectivity space uh, with both carrier billing and bundling. But it's not just in the consumer segments where we are starting to see uh, changes in enterprise. Carrier billing is going to enable enterprise IoT uh, and B2B content, especially with the advent of, of 5G. Although it's still early days, uh, we're starting to see traction in both of these areas. Uh, for example, we recently launched carrier billing with a B2B merchant 
providing drone services uh, in Japan. Uh, next slide, please. So against this backdrop, let's take a closer look at growth in carrier billing. Analysts at uh, Ondia, the research firm, project carrier billing is going to grow at a compounded annual rate of just under 7% over the next five years, from 50 billion U.S. dollars in 2020 to around 80 billion U.S. dollars in 2025. So growth continues to be driven by the leading app stores, games, uh, streaming and entertainment. Uh, you can see bundling in here as well. Uh, during the pandemic, as we all sheltered in place, carrier billing revenues experienced a real spike in transaction volumes um, as existing users purchased more online games and streaming services. And most importantly, a wave of new users discovered the convenience of carrier billing for the first time. In our networks, we observed increased purchase volumes anywhere in the range from 5 to 30 percent, depending on the country and the network operator. And uh, in terms of new users, uh, globally across our connections, we observed a 10 percent increase um, uh, during the height of the pandemic about a year ago this time, uh, with the strongest uh, increases coming in Asia and Latin America in terms of, of unique new users. There's been increased activity, especially in games and streaming video, um, as merchants rush to take advantage of this uh, particular moment in time by adding carrier billing to their checkout options. Carrier billing is enabling these merchants to engage with new customers in new markets. So examples from our business include recent launches with leading brands Razor in gaming and Storytel in audiobooks. And we now are seeing merchants express interest, um, um, merchants from new categories uh, express interest in carrier billing. So we're seeing merchants in the fitness space, ed tech, uh, productivity tools like photo editing, all starting to ask questions to try and better understand the benefits of adopting carrier billing as a payment method. Next slide, please. So, where could this new wave uh, of convergence in the services layer uh, enabled by carrier billing take network operators? Today, carrier billing accounts for less than 5% of network operator revenues. And although uh, it's starting from a small base, carrier billing's growth rate is high, uh, outstripping the growth of core voice and data connectivity over the next five years. So uh, KYC, uh, Know Your Customer, and insights from the carrier billing data stream offer interesting monetization opportunities for operators. One of the most compelling growth opportunities in carrier billing is really bundling. Bundling leverages an operator's brand, distribution, and billing assets, and OTT merchants gain fast and efficient access to a large uh, untapped customer base. Carrier billing enabled bundling with OTT merchants also helps operators to offset the sooner than expected erosion um, in the 5G premiums, right, that were brought about by, uh, uh, by the pandemic. But also uh, for the network operators, these OTT partnerships provide a compelling alternative to offer cord cutting consumers. Let's take a look at, uh, uh, bundling uh, on the next slide, please. So 5G revenues are expected to exceed non-5G revenues by 2025 for the network operators. However, as I mentioned earlier, the pandemic has already accelerated the erosion uh, of 5G premiums that uh, operators have been earning uh, on the new technology. In this environment, Mobile operators are beginning to realize the value of bundling, which, if done well, can drive higher acquisition of new customers and increase customer lifetime value for their existing base through higher revenues per customer and reduced churn. This year, uh, as an industry, we should approach 800 million bundled subscriptions globally, with subscription video on demand, or SVOD, uh, leading the way. 
Carrier billing is a natural fit in enabling both hard and soft bundling partnerships between carriers and these uh, streaming content providers. While we're seeing exciting use cases in new areas like AR, VR, and cloud gaming in some of the developed markets, in the near term, really streaming video will continue to be the most dominant category in bundling with 8K immersive real-time video, including live sports, made possible by 5G as is really uh, sort of a catalyst uh, for consumer uptake. As one example of this type of innovation, just yesterday, uh, one of my colleagues based in Singapore received a 5G bundling offer from Singtel with a leading VR merchant. So we're already uh, seeing uh, sort of innovation and interesting uh, sort of uh, partnerships forming in this space and much more to come. Next slide, please. So now I'd like to take a moment and talk a little bit about uh, how uh, our parent company, Entity Docomo, um, has been leading um, in this space. So Docomo was a pioneer uh, in carrier billing, um, and they have continued over many years to invest in, in innovation in the space. They were early, um, thanks to the regulatory environment in Japan, in enabling the online purchase of physical goods with carrier billing, and in recent years, added QR codes for in-store purchases. So just over 20 years ago, NTT Docomo launched iMode, uh, really the first comprehensive mobile internet uh, ecosystem. And since that time, they've continued to embrace this ecosystem approach um, and to growth, uh, driven by sustained innovation and really by a very uh, well-executed uh, content partner outreach. In recent years, Docomo combined their Deep Points loyalty program and their DBRI or Deep Payment e-wallet, uh, which is enabled with carrier billing, um, as well as this significant investment in building a compelling portfolio of online and offline merchants to create a market-leading lifestyle proposition, which has attracted strong consumer interest and engagement. Let me just share a few numbers to sort of put that into context for you. So Entity Docomo uh, has and serves um, 82 million uh, uh, customers, service subscriptions. Um, they have 35 million customers who are using their D-Payment or d uh, app application. Um, and all of those 35 million uh, d users uh, are also uh, on their D-Points loyalty program. So it's a combined bundle. Um, in the past year, uh, so they're at 35 million today, but they've experienced dramatic growth uh, from 2019 to 2020. Uh, that, port that, that number of users has grown by 40%. Now, what's driving that growth? One of the things that's driving that growth is a dramatic increase in the number of physical locations where these services can be used. So um, uh, in 2020, the Docomo achieved 3.1 million locations in Japan uh, where uh, DBRI or D-Payment could be used. And uh, that's up 80% year on year. So very dramatic growth. So the real test, right, of any sort of payment solution, payment method is, is transaction volumes. Um, and so Entity Docomo in uh, 2020 um, uh, achieved 7.5 billion U.S. dollars of transaction value uh, through uh, DBRI, uh, and that's doubled year on year. So you can see that these investments in uh, creating a compelling uh, ecosystem with the right partners, uh, combining the right payment methods, loyalty, that this will really drive um, substantial uh, consumer engagement. NTD Docomo looks to add uh, a series of fintech um, offerings, investment offerings, insurance. Uh, they already have some initial uh, uh, propositions out there um, in, uh, in the uh, ecosystem, uh, and they see the advent of 5G as an opportunity to do more um, in that space. The DeVry converged ecosystem, in many ways, is similar to China's super apps like uh, WeChat Pay and Alipay, but in this case, really with carrier billing uh, at the core is the payment method. Next slide, please. 
So just to wrap up, a little bit of a look at some of the challenges and opportunities that we can work on together um, as, uh, as an industry. Uh, one of the first things is really raising awareness and educating merchants. Um, I am consistently surprised when um, I'm in touch with my business development team about the number of uh, market leading OTT merchants that they engage with who really have almost no awareness uh, of direct carrier billing or the benefits that it can provide. So really raising awareness and, and educating merchants is, is a key priority for all of us. Uh, subscription bundling, uh, we've talked about today uh, the, the great uh, opportunities and growth. And, you know, bundling, uh, we, I've seen some research from uh, Ovum that suggests that consumers really appreciate the value that bundling uh, gives to them, uh, both in terms of uh, ease of use uh, and choice as a payment method, uh, but also in terms of the value, the perceived value it brings. So bundling is important and we need to work harder to get the network operator community and the OTT merchants to more quickly agree uh, on core marketing programs. I think one of the biggest stumbling blocks we observe is that it can take far too long and sometimes opportunities disappear because we don't have a, let's say, uh, an industry set approach uh, to how these co-marketing should work. Standardization, fraud and bad debt management, improved analytics, all uh, important opportunities where we ought to be working together uh, as an industry uh, to improve the experience. I think increased standardization is particularly important so that we can more effectively compete with uh, the growing strength of, of e-wallets, for example. Beyond mobile, uh, there are opportunities uh, for carrier billing uh, with web applications, set-top boxes and consoles. Uh, in particular, we've seen uh, increased uh, uh, network operator demand uh, for set-top box uh, integration of carrier billing solutions. And here, uh, again, as an industry, we have a real challenge because of the high degree of fragmentation uh, in the set-top box space. Uh, so there's a real opportunity to work on that. New areas like micro-insurance uh, for, let's say, uh, car rental, uh, scooter rental, uh, bike rental, uh, telehealth, um, uh, micro-insurance for sports, all of these present interesting uh, opportunities where carrier billing as a payment method could be an effective way to drive growth. Uh, look forward to having discussions about how we approach that again collectively as an industry to sort of create those opportunities. And then finally, really, I think the most substantial opportunity that we have in front of us is for us to work collectively with regulators um, to get clarity um, uh, or to get approval to do physical goods, ticketing, and transport uh, with carrier billing as a payment method um, in markets like Japan and Korea, where this has uh, been in, in place for quite a long time. Uh, very excellent use cases, mature, big consumer adoption. Uh, we'd love to see that in Europe, markets outside of Europe, but that really takes all of us coming together. Um, now, the Mobile Ecosystem Forum has a vibrant carrier billing working group. If you're not a member, uh, I really do encourage you to join uh, and participate because it is through forums like that that we are going to address some of these key issues around raising awareness, standardization, and really um, uh, driving uh, sort of a unified approach to the regulators on physical goods. So I want to thank you all uh, for the time. I remain really optimistic about the future of uh, uh, our corner uh, of the payments industry. Um, uh, we're growing quickly, as I said, from a small base. Uh, the future is bright. Look forward to working with all of you. Uh, happy to take any questions. Uh, so uh, back to you and thank you, Daria. Well, thank you, jo uh, Jonathan. Uh, music to my ears when you say some, such good words uh, about uh, meth. But uh, seriously, meth is uh, um, an organization that brings together people. And in the end, you had it in your, in your list. There is a lot of things that can be done together. So before I go to, we have uh, only a few questions as we are running a bit late. But um, before I go and ask you any of those, let me tell you, let's give us an example. Is there somewhere, for instance, the marketing, a co-marketing approach between operators? And we've got quite a few operators listening right now. Uh, is there a good case? Is there, is there somewhere that the operators have joined uh, at the joint marketing activities and really worked? 
Yeah, you, you can see them across uh, uh, you know a range of industries, actually. I would say if you wanted to look at some of the work that Telefonica has done, um, I think that's great. Uh, America Mobile, they're, they're doing some interesting bundling uh, opportunities with co-marketing. So th there are, you, you at the moment, it's really with the largest streaming brands. So, you know, it's all the names that we understand. It's the Netflixes. It's, it's the sort of um, very, very premium um, uh, sort of streaming audio and digital brands. Uh, we're starting to see some new conversations take place. Uh, we, uh, we sort of names like title, uh, but we are seeing these conversations go on for perhaps longer than they might be. And so part of this is just um, uh, the more of these partnerships that and then bundles that get put in place, a sort of, let's say, a market level will emerge. And we don't yet have a uniform sort of market price, if you will, for these co-marketing campaigns or market levels. And I think, again, conversations exchanging ideas about um, what could be best practices, how to get this done faster, um, will push us into bundling opportunities with a broader range of brands beyond just the, the most uh, you know, high profile uh, uh, video and, uh, and, and streaming audio brands. I see we have a few more questions. Time is not on our side. I'll ask you the, the first one that arrived. In your presentation, you mentioned, that's what Michael says, well, you mentioned strongest growth in terms of users in Latin America and Asia. Um, does that mean that Europe and North American markets are saturated? Are they slower? What's happening there? Um, I don't think that they're saturated. Um, I think that there is continued growth available. Um, but again, starting with smaller bases, especially in Latin America and certainly Asia. So from a percentage, uh, from a percentage growth uh, perspective, uh, that's where we saw uh, the largest growth. Although I think it is fair to say um, in terms of just physical numbers of new unique users during the pandemic, I think Asia in particular um, was particularly was particularly strong, at least in our network. Well, that sounds like good news uh, across, uh, and it's a very great way to start uh, Visa Day on mobile payments. So the, the growth is a very good background for any discussions. Jo Jonathan, uh, thanks again for giving us a primer and so much information and uh, analysis in the market. I hope to have a chance to expand in future. Uh, for the time being, it's a big thank you for us, and I hope we'll uh, see you again soon. Thank you, Dario. Thanks for having me and good luck with the rest of uh, uh, the uh, uh, payments uh, day today. Take good care.